Hey everyone, welcome to Squeak Factor. This is your DJ Serena. You're tuned in to the Squeak Factor only on RadioRiff.com. Today we have the pleasure of having Colo, a special guest here on the Squeak Factor. We actually had the pleasure of meeting up via the Twitterverse. I don't know why, I just love that word. <laughs> yeah. Um, Good yeah, exactly, exactly, which was amazing to me, which was amazing to me. I, I was able to actually ask for a song, which was aired for the first time ever. Colo uh, was on Radio Riff. Uh, the song's called Castro. Um, from listeners, I got some amazing feedback. This was actually recently within the last week and a half um, on an unsanctioned edition of The Squeak Factor, which was on a Monday. Uh, so whom do I have the pleasure of speaking with today? You have uh, John Vanell, the singer from uh, from the British band Colo. Awesome. It's amazing to have you on the show. Thank you so much for agreeing to be on The Squeak Factor. Yeah. Tell me about Colo. I've, I heard a dab of music. I know that you're across the pond from us. Um, I know that you just recorded your debut album with Three Doors Down. Where can we start? What do you want to talk about? Where can we start? So um, I guess we can start with the fact that we're obviously a British rock band um, who have been together for what, probably about a year and a half. Um, and we're sort of currently playing all over the UK, playing a lot in London. Um, and as you mentioned a minute ago, we've, uh, we've just come back from, from recording our, our debut album with Three Doors Down, or rather Chris Henderson from Three Doors Down. Um, and yeah, we're just looking to start touring that and start promoting that now over the next sort of few months, really. Very amazing. That's fucking awesome. I can't imagine what it was, uh, recording with Chris. I have, you know, been listening to Three Doors Down since before my son was actually alive and on this planet. Mm. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, I've known Chris now for six years, mm-hmm. and uh, I was lucky enough to tour with with Three Doors Down um, in the UK back in 2008, and uh, and I recorded with him as well in his studio back then as well. Uh, oh wow! Yeah. So, and it was. It's always been a. A bit of a goal of mine to get back out there and work with him because we got on and had such a good time the first time around. Um, I kind of made it my mission to get back there. Um, I didn't think it would take six years, but, you know, I found the right guys to go back with and we wrote the right songs and so we made it happen. So um, Sometimes it doesn't matter how long you take as long as you get to that final that final destination. That's what I've always said. Yeah, you know? Yeah. I, I completely agree. Yeah. Yep. Um, so do you, I, I, I'm just curious, what part of England are you from? Uh, South London. Wow, okay. That's, mm. pr- that's pretty awesome. Uh, you know, I've actually heard some pretty freaking cool things about England and the coffee. I really want to go there and try it. I'm a bit of a coffee nut. Na- um, Coffee's coffee good. Coffee's yep. good. Yeah, yep. yeah, absolutely. I, I've heard a couple other things too, like the pubs and the bars and like Manchester and there's a lot of rowdy things, but well, we're going to stay away from that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's, let's talk about how good London is. <laughs> is good. Um, so do you mind me asking, where did the name Cobo come from? Uh, well, it's it's actually a, a sort of African name, uh, mm-hmm. which uh, I kind of always liked, thought it was catchy, thought it was easy to remember, and I could ring to it. Um, and I started messing about with some fonts and logos for for the name, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and uh, just found that that you could you could get it looking good, um, you know, fairly easily. Uh, and I started gigging with it, um, and then sort of found that a lot of people liked it, and it stuck with everyone. And um, uh, since then, I kind of found out that there's is, there's loads of different meanings for the word colo. Right. Uh, one of which is arse in Greek, bike in uh, some other language, and, and it's a <laughs> town in uh, in Poland. And um, but the weirdest one, I think, which which we almost get a bit of trouble with, is is the fact it's um it's a dance in the Ukraine. So there's, there's a dance called colo. So sometimes when people Google us, they they get this weird Ukrainian dance, which has nothing to do with us, obviously. Well, I never actually Googled you. We found and met up with each other on Twitter, so I can't say that I did that I did anything that like that, I probably, that crazy. I probably tested you to check out our check out our links. So, well, no, I think it was a little bit of both. I I think it was like a mutual follow back, and yeah. then um, we just jib jabbed a little bit. Which hey, we're here now, right? We're here now, exactly. So it does work. <laughs> and you know, I mean, it's Thursday, and this was all in a matter of four days yeah it's the beauty of uh, social networks isn't it? <laughs> exactly exactly um so i'm just going to be a little nosy how many companies uh did you talk to at all before three doors down called you back uh well three doors down or rather chris you know and, and we worked with a couple other guys uh from the band chet roberts who's the other guitarist as well but to be honest working with those guys would have was a bit of a number one priority but I didn't know at that point when we were sort of shopping around for, for producers and stuff and, and studios whether we would be able to logistically make it work, you know, through the down right. or a 
big touring band who tour all over the place and uh, right. um, pretty busy guys. And you know we're busy too. So it was it was trying to work it out and 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 try and think of the logistics and when we could actually do it. And uh, so that was the only going to be the stumbling block really. Um, but we made it work and. I'm really pleased because they were the number one choice that we wanted to go with for the album. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and they're just such great, accommodating guys, and they, they made us feel so welcome that it was just totally the right the right move, you know. So. Absolutely. I can definitely see where you're coming from. I mean, you know, to have already have, like, that pre, that, 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 that relationship mm. with with Chris that you had and you know I mean you did shop around obviously a little bit not much but a little bit from what I'm gathering from what you're saying but be able to like you know just have that final goal of getting to work with Chris and throwing down the tracks in the studio did you guys fly here or did they fly there oh yeah so we went to Nashville or just outside Nashville uh to to studios called Rivergate Studios okay which is you know I can't speak highly enough of that of that sort of studio it's such a, a good fun place and um so yeah, it was it was it was uh, the, the only other reason we weren't going to go out there is that we couldn't make it work. So it's it was just such a a relief to, to make it happen. And um, right. you know, it, it's great because Chris has been there and done it. He's been in his band sold twenty million albums, had several number ones. So we want. I, it was great to to pick his brains and and ask him for advice on what we should do next and, and yeah. ask for his help and stuff. And he's he's just so accommodating and knowledgeable and you know willing to to help us with his his knowledge and advice that it's not just the recording we got out but we've got we got his kind of his his expertise in, in what we should do next so you know absolutely absolutely you know i mean i i'd like to think that you know with uh, with the station owner for radio riff uh la carlin hello sorry about that that's okay that's all right we can always edit that part out <laughs> <laughs> yeah my phone just went sorry you, you were saying about the owner of radio riff yes our our station owner as well as a uh, fellow dj la carlin uh from the Loch Ness chronicles um you know i tell him every year on the birthday of the squeak factor i'm gonna do something new i'm gonna learn something new and i'm mm. gonna do this and i'm gonna do that and he's like okay well what do you want to do i said i have no fucking clue <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah. when i get there I want to fucking tell you. And, yeah. you know, every time I go to him and say, well, I need to learn this. How do I do this? Yeah. Yeah. You know, whether it be contacting bands like you and I contacted each other, mm-hmm. you know, it's just like, well, okay, well, try it this way. Yeah. Try, yeah. try it that way. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing. And I love that. I love how, like, you know, it's just just such, like, a give-take. And that's exactly what I was hearing from you when you were talking about Chris. Yeah, learning off people, you know, learning off the, the people in the know. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and you came into Nashville, which is fucking amazing. I mean, there's so much soul that comes out of Nashville. I mean, you know, from different genres, mm-hmm. um country but we're not going to talk about that because we're into rock and roll <laughs> yeah. all about the rock exactly exactly but yeah. there's so much really. i mean and you guys had the you guys were able to come here and whereas i've never been below the mason dixon line except to go to florida and yeah. i was actually in alabama but we're not going to talk about that uh-huh. um <laughs> yeah well i mean i'm nashville I, I love i find i find nashville and America, a really inspiring place to go and do my music and, and mm. do, do the band and stuff. And I, I just find it a place where you just feel, especially in Nashville, you just feel like everyone is there trying to make music and, you know, the, the, uh, jobs and, and proper jobs and real jobs, whatever you want to call it, is secondary just to, to music and to making music and to going out and playing live. And uh, that's why that's why I like it, because it just makes me feel like, you know, we're on the right track. We're out in Nashville recording our album. This is this is amazing. You know, so it's um it's it's, it's such an inspiring place to to make an album. I think you're right. I think you're right. I know there's a lot of, I mean, I myself am based out of Chicago. Um, I lived in San Diego, and a lot of bands came out oh. of San Diego. Mm. Um, are you familiar with POD? Yeah, I know POD. Yeah. Okay. Well, POD actually came out of San Diego. Um, Jason Mraz. We're not going to oh, really okay. talk about the whole pop Huge thing. Artist, though. Huge you artist. know, he came out of San Diego too, so it's kind of crazy. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, and it was just like there's so much like it, depending on where you go, like San Diego, Chicago. I mean, Joe Bonamassa came from Chicago. Yeah, and yeah. even actually, uh, Veruca Salt. Oh, okay. Yep. Chicago. Yeah. Oh, wow. nice. So, I mean, Chicago is a great city. It's, it's got a lot going on, isn't it? So. Yeah, and um, even actually uh, the more of a heavier rock metal metal group, uh, Disturbed. Oh yeah, I know Disturbed. 
Yep, yep. Um, so, you know, I'm going to try and uh, veer back because we're just kind of going all over the place. I'm sorry about that. I mm-hmm. love talking with you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is kind of a silly question, and I'm a bit of a Hulu guru myself. Have you ever run into any of the cast of The Only Way is Essex? I know that one of the cast mates runs... Sorry, that was my phone <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. Um, so I know that one of the castmates runs a nightclub. Would you ever consider playing there? I certainly would. Yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, the only way is Essex, or rather, they call it Tarry over here. Um, oh, okay. Uh, just to shorten it, but um, it's it's huge, you know. And uh, I think the most polite way that I can put it is there are there is a slightly different breed. Those those sort of Essex uh, people. Well, would it be in would it be the Essex girls or would it be everyone combined, men and women? Uh, everyone, yeah. They're, they're, I mean, I don't particularly watch it, but um, obviously you can't help but watch it because it's such a big here. Um, <laughs> and they are, yeah, they're slightly. Um, everyone's tangoed and bright, you know, bright orange tan, even though they, they live in Britain. Um, and they all, yeah, all talk with a strange accent. I don't know. It's um, it's it's hugely successful, but um, it's it, it amazes me how successful it is. But I certainly would play one of their clubs. Absolutely, yeah. And we're up for playing anyway. Very cool. Um, so I. I heard you say earlier uh, that you guys have been all been together uh, for about a year and a half mm. um, and playing over in the UK. Mm. Um, have you guys known each other longer than that? No, not really. Um, so we all started um, playing when we were fairly young, not together, but in, in different bands. And right. uh, I was from the southwest of England uh, and the bassist was from Spain. Uh, and the drummer's the only sort of South London guy out of all of us. Um, but I moved to London to try and find mu- new musicians because I kind of outgrew, not outgrew, that sounds a bit patronising to the people that are there, but I kind of ran out of musicians that were willing to come on the journey with me in my hometown. It's only a small hometown. So I had to move to London. It was either make or break. I go to London and I find new new members and I start gigging it again or I give up. And right. giving up wasn't an option. So I moved to London. No, no giving, up, giving up is never an option. No, it's not. No, I don't. I, don't, I think... I think if I was to stay there, it would have been me giving up on it. So I wasn't willing to do that. So I moved to London and found these guys. And uh, and it was Danny and... Correct. Daniel Mourinho is on bass and Stephen Fuller on drums. And um, Stephen on drums. The best thing about it, though, is we met and we're all the same age, late late sort of 20s. And um, we just, we, we, we've just been doing it for since we we're 16, 17. So we're all in the same boat. We all want to make you know good music and we all want to get somewhere now. We kind of... We we we've all been in bands with members that aren't up for it, that aren't as committed as, as maybe us. And I think now we came together at the right time, and it wasn't meant to be earlier on. And and we all kind of have this feeling now that we we come together at the right time, and things are happening really quickly for us, you know. So mm-hmm. it's uh, it feels like the right place at the right time, you know. Definitely. Um, when did you ultimately know that you wanted to get into music? Uh, about fifteen. When, okay. I start re- when I was when I was sort of old enough to go and start buying albums for myself at the local record store. Um, Very nice. Yeah, I'd start getting to a lot of the British bands. I remember seeing Free Fighters at some English festivals and just being blown away by how you know how, what, what a good show they put on and and bands like you know people like Beck was put on a great show and I watched him at festivals and we was, I started going to festivals at fifteen and that's when I knew I wanted to I wanted to pick up a guitar and start being in a band. Um, I'd, I'd fiddled about with guitar since 12 and got lessons, but I knew at sort of 15 that I wanted to be in a rock band um, and play and try and make it, you know. Right, definitely. Mm. Um, so I, I can definitely, I think I went to my first show, uh, shit, I was 10. I saw Bon Jovi at the Homecoming Tour in Trent, New Jersey. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually took my 12-year-old to his first show, and he's saw uh, Third Eye Blind when he was Six. Oh wow, cool! That's amazing. <laughs> you start them young. Yep, yep. yep. Got to get them started on, on the right foot, especially when it comes to music, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's massive music. Yep, yep, yep. I agree. I definitely agree. And we've definitely gotten him on the right track with a lot of music. He loves a lot of like the classic rock. And yourself? Uh, uh, what what bands do I like? Yeah, yeah. Where do you find your influences come from? So I mean I like a lot of the British bands, um, like bands like the Smiths and the Jam and and cl- kind of the classic British bands. And um, I, I mean I I grew up listening to sort of Stereophonics and, and bands like that. But also I love what well, a lot of us in the band like the Foo Fighters, um, Chili Peppers, obviously you know Three Doors Down, and then obviously classic bands like Led Zeppelin and um, you know the, the Eagles and people just and then 
people like Fleetwood Mac and James Taylor, some of the, the real classic songsmiths we also really like. Um, Shinedown, uh, as, possibly Alter Bridge. Yeah, um, correct. So the bassist is massively into Shinedown and Alter Bridge. Um, I think they're pretty much you know, his two favourite bands at the moment. Um, he's also into a band called Porcupine Tree, who are a sort of British band. Um, I'll, have to, I'll have to take a look into them. I've never heard of them. Yeah, he, he loves them. Um, he's into them. But, I, th- I mean... Steve, the drummer, has got a pretty eclectic mix of music. Um, you know, big Chili Peppers fans, all of us and stuff. So cannot not be a Chili Peppers fan. They have been rocking for fucking forever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, would you believe it that Anthony Kiedis and Flea are both fifty? I know, I know, it's ridiculous, and they're still they're still competing with the, with the young guys, aren't they? And stuff. So I mean, they definitely are. I don't know if you watch American football, but they were on uh, for the Super Bowl half half halftime jam, and they were just all over the stage, like bam. Was that here we are. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did see that. Yeah. Yeah, it was very interesting. I have to say. Yeah, well, I, I mean, to be honest, as a pop artist, I think Bruno Mars is, is nailing it. He's got a cracking voice, and he knows how to write a song that gets in your head, you know? So mm-hmm. you're doing something right. <laughs> yep, yep, I agree. I definitely mm-hmm. agree. I tend to wonder, like, you know, where a lot of, like, the songs are inspired from. Where did you uh, Where did you get a lot of your inspiration for Castro? So Castro was, um, I mean, people think it's about Fidel Castro, but it's not. I mean, I, um, I used to work in, like, an independent sort of record shop, which was kind of one of those old dingy high fidelity type record shops that were was, was you know really cool we used to get the locals in to drink coffee and tell right. us their stories so a lot of my songs are about kind of stories that i was told over the record counter um okay. and castro was kind of was was started off by an idea i had just about an old leader that has lost all his power that is desperate to, to be to be the leader again but he can't because he's lost all his power so it was a bit of a tongue in tongue in cheek funny kind of leader sitting on top of his crumbling castle type story and um <laughs> and, and it just worked i think I, I, I like people asking me what it's about because it can be whatever whatever you want it to be about and i've had i've had people who are getting bullied that think that the video we've done to it is in, has inspired them and stuff because because it shows you know us against the world type thing so um, I, I want people to get what, what they want out of, out of it, really. And I just, I, I think the word Castro inspires something. I, li- I like the word Castro. It, it, it kind of conjures up something in my, in my mind, and I don't know quite what. <laughs> Does that make sense? No, I think you actually nailed it on the head perfectly. Really? Um, but that's just me. And, you know, you... <laughs> You said what you had to say, but and that's kind of how I roll too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. One of our girls and fellow staff mate, as well as loyal listeners, compared uh, Colo to Stone Sour, which I felt the same in the comparison. How mm. does that make you feel? Well, I'm very happy about that comparison. Um, they, they they made it over in the UK to some to some extent. They had a couple of quite big songs, um, but. Having heard that, I think I'm gonna gonna sort of delve into their back catalogue a bit more because I've only really heard stuff that made it over here on MTV and and and, and Kerrang and, and the radio and stuff. So I'm uh, I'm gonna dig a bit deeper into their stuff now if uh, if uh, with that comparison. So very I'm, I'm, I'm awesome. Yeah. Yay! That makes me happy to hear that. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm definitely a fan of a lot of Corey Taylor's work, um, whether it be solo, whether it be with Stone Sour, or whether it be with Slipknot. So hearing you say that I'm going to check that out, that makes me happy because I definitely love that band. And I yeah. now have a newfound affliction for your band. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, I recently sat down with another band who said that they have dinner and communicate daily with everything and about everything. What do you three do that keeps you close knit? Um, so, I mean, we obviously we rehearse twice a week as it is. So we get together face to face and jam out and try and write and uh, and just keep keep our eye on the ball with the live performance. I mean, we're gigging most weeks, so um, we we still like to, to to get back in and just play together. Uh, just just with us three, so we can we can kind of really really get professional, you know. But um, we we call each other every day, we text each other every day with updates. Um, it's just an everyday thing. Being in a band, if you're serious about being in a band, is is a daily thing you've got to do. You've got to keep on it. Um, you've got to keep posting updates to your fans. Um, you've got to keep you know messaging people for more gigs. Um, it's it's just a daily thing, and we are constantly on the phone to each other trying to figure out. You know the, the next thing we should be posting to you guys, the fact you know the people who are who are following us. So the fans, it, it, the fans, the DJs, fans. and seeing what uh, what kind of radio stations are interested in hearing you guys. 
Exactly, because there's nothing worse than checking out a band that you like and seeing that their last post was six weeks ago. It can't be that. You know, if you're serious, it's got to be... Well, I understand. Do you know I, what I mean? You no, know, I do. I do. Because, I, you know, I check out, like, you know, certain bands because I'm trying that whole, like, Twitter thing where I, it shows when uh, you're being played. And mm. it's not working out too well for me, but... I think I'm missing, like, a key, like, ingredient. But, like, you know, you see some bands, and they haven't posted in bloody months, and you're just like, what the fuck? Yeah, well, you're not, you're not an act- you, you can't be an active band if you've got no news, you know. Exactly. And people like just funny photos. You just take a photo of yourself at a rehearsal room saying, you know, written a new song or something, and that's just all you need to do. It doesn't, it's not a lot, but it just keeps, keeps it ticking over and keeps, it, keeps it, the buzz going, you know. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, when you, like, maybe you personally, or if you want to speak for, uh, Stephen and Danny as well, when you wake up in the morning, are you, is your first thought about music? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, so it's the first thing I think about, and it's what I think about on the, the, the you know, the train into London when I've got things to do, and it's, it's, it's a, a complete obsession of mine, and it has been since the day I, I did my first, played my first gig. Um, and, How old were you when you played your first gig, John? Uh, I was... 18 I think right 17, 18 I was 18 um and I'm, I'm just I, I'm constantly thinking of ways of how we can get to the next level and get to the kind of level of success that I want to get to and I uh, it's 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 const- I'm constantly conjuring up plans and people we need to, to to contact and ways that we can we can do it and uh the, I think the guys work in different ways I think they're all equally as a kind of obsessed in their own way Danny's the kind of guy that makes the, the cool videos up and, and does uh, a lot of that Steve does a lot of kind of the gig posters and stuff for us as well so he'll he'll knock up some, some gig posters so, so they do they do so, such important stuff behind the scenes and I'm trying to think of the, the, the you know trying to think of new contacts that I can make um, right. so so it's, it's, it's a real joint effort and I think we're all all as obsessed as each other with it in in, in different ways you know Yep, yep, yep. You have your Photoshop guru, you have your talk person, and then you mm. have the, and then you have one other person who just kind of like brings it all together, and yeah. it's just yeah. kind of what makes you sandwich. Yeah, exactly that, and I tell you what, I've been in bands where you, one person doesn't do anything, and it doesn't work. You're dragging them along, and it just doesn't work. You need you need everyone uh, on the same page, driving driving this this project um, uh, with the same sort of force. Um, and the, the results then start coming. If you're all in it together and you're all pushing it together, hmm. then then it, you, you can get results. And it's tough and it's frustrating, but you, you can do it and you can start climbing that ladder. It's slow, but it's but you can visibly see yourself doing it if, you, if you're all in it together. The slow and steady always wins the race, though, because when you it, and it's definitely always the rabbit and the the rabbit and the tortoise theorem. There, I can agree. <laughs> yeah, good, <laughs> good stuff. Um, and as always, this is becoming a popular question for me to ask. Would you want to see Colo on South Park, the American cartoon? I would love to see Colo on South Park. Absolutely. Yeah, that would be, that would be, uh, would be, uh, promoting that heavily if we got on that very, very proudly as well. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine being cartoonized like that a little bit? It would just be amazing. You'd, you'd know you've made it then, surely. <laughs> oh, that's it. We've done it. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, bring it on. <laughs> Very awesome. Um, is there anything that you want the world to know about Colo? Uh, I think the first thing I want to know is is where people can check us out, which is obviously, uh, we're Colo, when you search us, we're Colo Band, so K-O-L-O and then B-A-N-D. So everything, Facebook, Facebook.com is, is forward slash Colo Band. Twitter is Twitter.com forward slash Colo Band. Instagram.com forward slash Colo Band. So you get the kind of picture. Um, our website is Colo hyphen band.com which you can catch up all the latest news um and the second thing i want to add really is that we're obviously releasing this album that we've just recorded with Thrills down we're releasing it uh in may i think the first week of may um and we're hopefully going to be touring uh america at some point this year um, um i'm hoping that uh, you guys will make a pit stop in chicago because i will be there well it's certainly a place like a city i want to play so absolutely <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. would I, you know? This is definitely something I should have asked you earlier. What would be your top five tour spots uh, in America or, or worldwide? Um, you pick. Okay. Well, in America, I mean, I've, I've, I was lucky enough to tour America for three months uh, back in '08. So, um, but for me, I was I've been to, I've been to most cities in, in in the US, and I can honestly say that 
I would love to play San Francisco. Uh, I would love to, I've played New York already, but I'd love to play there again. It's just New York. It's just amazing. Uh, uh, I am New York born, so I agree. <laughs> oh, really? New York's yeah. just, oh, I, I love that place. I, well, I love San Francisco as well, but I think for me, San Francisco, New York again. Uh, Chicago would be up there for sure. Um, I would love, uh, coming away from America, I, I would love to play Japan. Uh, I've never played there, and uh, it's, it's a country, uh, that fascinates me, and I would love to take Kyla there and see, just see how we get on, you know, and 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 see see um, what what's going on there. And I think lastly, so uh, it'd probably be Germany. Germany. Uh, I actually spoke to Chris Henderson um, about from Three Doors Down about Germany, and he was he was sort of saying, you guys would love it out there, you get on really well. Um, and he was just really bigging it up as a, as a country to go and gig. So I, I would love to. To tour, to tour Germany as well. So I make that Germany, Japan, Chicago, New York, and San Francisco. Very, How's that? very cool. That's, that's, that's just like crazy. I will be here and <laughs> I will be there and I will come and meet you personally. Cause I mean, right now we're sitting here on Skype and you're across the pond. So that's okay. Awesome. Yeah. Um, but no, I will be there when you guys come here. I mean, Good hopefully stuff. you guys will definitely go to the house of booze cause I know all the security guards there. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. <laughs> Yeah, we went to, uh, I actually had the privilege of sitting down with Cody Hansen from Hinder in oh. October, um, and I went to go and do a re- quick recording on my digital recorder, and I forgot batteries. Oh, no. <laughs> and the security guard was kind of mean, and he was like, grr, but I'm like, dude, I'm like, devour the day is literally willing to give me a quick moment of their time on and I have no battery so it's like just go go and come back you'll be fine I'll let you back in oh uh, that's really good yeah yeah so you were okay <laughs> yeah, wow that's, that, well, that's a nice touch isn't it that makes yeah. you fondly then so that's 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 good yeah yep yeah. um it was it was really good um and uh DJ Timmy from Timmy's Time Warp actually yeah. had the privilege of sitting down with Brendan Hill from Blues uh-huh. Traveler um and the same thing they're like oh hey you guys from the radio station are back again. I said, yeah. Yeah, we are. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So it's yep. fun to get recognized and that sort of thing. So. Yep, yep, yep. Definitely. Um, cool. So, hey, you know what? I don't know if you've got some more stuff to add. Like, do you have anything else you want to, like, just shout out the world since this is going to be your first American radio interview? I think just make sure you check Colo out because we are uh, – good and we want everybody to listen to us and come and add us on all our social networks and we will be coming to play a town near you soon awesome and you heard it here you can definitely check them out on facebook forward slash colo band now you have to make sure you add the band in there and then on twitter colo band on Mm -hmm. instagram colo band make sure you put band in there too otherwise you're not going to find them youtube Um, as well and YouTube as well, because yeah. they have their own channel. Um, yeah. And uh, you can also check out their website as well. And that was Colo Band. And that was uh, .com, .org. Yeah, .com. .com. Okay, mm-hmm. Colo Band.com. Oh, it's um, like Colo Hyphen Band. Oh, Colo Hyphen Band.com. Okay, yeah. I'm glad we got yeah. that settled out. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, no worries. <laughs> All right, so uh, at Colo Band. Uh, for Twitter, uh, yep. forward slash Colo Band on Facebook, yep. forward slash Colo Band on the Instagram. Yep. Um, you've heard it here first on RadioRiff.com. This was John Vernell from Colo, uh, and this is me, your squeaky DJ Serena. I hope you guys enjoy the uh, enjoy the interview. I know I have, but you know, hey, <laughs> chance is <laughs> talking to strangers and an awesome interview like four days later. 